Shadrach and Abednego. They was in the fire furnace and the fourth one. That don't hurt you. My God, you would jump out your chair and kick off your slippers and run around the church off that message. That's right. God Almighty, give me the 12th chapter of the book of Romans, if you will. Mm -hmm. I want to take my time and soak you a little. We're live today. I want to greet all of my viewers, you that love it and you that hate it and that are watching. Because I have a lot of haters that don't miss this program. Hey Amen. Don't miss it. I had a man uh, wrote me and said, you ought to be ashamed of yourself being on television. Well, how you know I'm on there if you ain't watching? Man wrote me and said that it's a sin to be on television. It's a sin to be on television. He said, I'll watch you on internet. <laughs> You're so hell-bound foolish. <laughs> Listen, look at the word tell a vision. Television was here before you had the flat screen. Let me, let me give you some good knowledge now. Television was back in the days of the prophets. Ha, 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 ha. I want to throw that out there. I didn't say Sony <laughs> or Toshiba, none of that. But television was here when the prophets was here. In fact, let me go back further. Mm -hmm. Television was here in the Garden of Eden. That's right. <laughs> eh? That's right. What do you mean? Tell a vision. Break the word down. Vision means to see. That's right. Tell a vision means let's speak about what we see. That's right. So yes, not the box television, right. not what you buy from Best Buy. That wasn't here in the Garden of Eden. No. But telling what you see was here in the Garden of Eden. That's right. Don't you hear how when the man bit up the fruit, mm -hmm. his eyes came open, That's right. and he began to tell what he saw? <laughs> Come jump on Pastor Jennings, you little jack leg creatures. <laughs> right. Tell the vision. Amen. Now, I'm telling the vision. That's right. You better give me the book of Habakkuk. Habakkuk, that's right. I'm going to tell the vision. Mm -hmm. Now, when God gave a vision, mm -hmm. man took what's seen every day in the world and recorded it. That's right. Mm -hmm. Hear the old man now. That's right. Man took what's seen in the world every day and recorded it. Mm -hmm. And before... You was able to see the vision on a screen. He played the vision out of a box. That's right. He called it a radio. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was the sound of visions, what people see, mm -hmm. what people do. Yeah. Now, you can use the radio right and wrong. That's right. Yes, you can. That's right. There's a lawful way to use a radio, and there's an unlawful way to use a radio. Mm -hmm. Now, before man made the box called television, he had a movie screen. Yeah. So now what you heard on the radio, they put on a big television, but they call it a movie screen. That's right. But it wasn't nothing but a television. Right. What do you mean? You visual it because you've seen it. And it was spoken what was seen before they had television in your home? If you wanted to watch the news, you had to go to a movie theater. Right. So then the preacher said, well, it's a sin to go to the movie theater. Mm -hmm. It depends on what you watch. Right. It's a sin to look at internet. Yeah. It depends on what you watch. That's right. It's a sin to look at television. On, it depends on what you watch. Right. It's a sin to listen at radio. On, it depends on what you listen to. It's a sin to walk the street of America. It depends on where you're going. That's right. Go ahead. Go ahead. The Bible talk about the things of this world of using it mm -hmm. 
and not abusing it. Abusing it. I want to balance. You better give me. It's so much crowding my mind. Amen. You better give me Habakkuk first. First in Habakkuk And then I want to get the epistle of John, love not the world. Right. And then I want to get the apostle that said, use the things of the world and not abuse it. That's and right. then I want to get where the apostle said how the wife loved the things of Go the ahead, world brother. to please the husband. That's right. I want all you apples and stolics and Pentecostals Jump on Pastor Jenner's now. That's right. Amen. I, 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 I love it one day. I want to take you for a ride. <laughs> Amen. All right, follow me in your Bible. First in the book of Habakkuk chapter 2, we start at verse 1. Listen. I will stand upon my watch. I will stand upon my watch. And set me upon the tower. And set me upon the tower. And will watch to see what he will say unto me. Wait a minute. I'm a watch. And will watch. I'm, I'm looking. Watch. Watch. You don't watch with your ears. No. You watch with your eyes. That's right. All right. And will watch to see what he will say unto yes. me. And what I shall answer when I am reproved. Uh -huh. And the Lord answered me and said, write the vision. Right. Amen. Right. Write the vision. Amen. When you look at us on YouTube or on television, you're looking at a vision in action. That's right. Because this work that God put in my hands, he first showed me in a vision. That's right. Huh? That's right. And now you're able to see the vision grow in stages everywhere we go. You can see a broadcast coming out of different parts of America and different parts of the world. What you're doing? Looking at the vision. That's right. And then you go tell people about the vision. Did you see them folk got baptized? That's did right. you see them folk receive the Holy Ghost? That's did right. you see the Spirit come upon Brother Williams? Well, how <laughs> did I saw it? I turned the channel to look at a, a, vision a vision that was recorded. That's right. And I go tell others about the vision. That's right. Uh -huh. Write the vision. Tell a vision and means speak about what you see. That's right. Amen. That's right. Glory to God. Listen at this. And the Lord answered me. The Lord answered And me. said, write the vision. Write the vision. And make it, make plain, it plain upon tables, tables. That he may run that read it. He may run that read it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. What you see is for an appointed time. But at the end. At the end. It shall speak. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. It's going to talk. You're going to hear speak. it. Shall speak. <laughs> That's right. At the end, it's going to speak. You're going to hear it. That's right. Listen, he's talking about a speaking vision. That's right. He's talking about a speaking vision. For the vision. The vision. Is yet for an appointed time. Every time God shown something, it's an appointed time for the fulfillment of that thing. That's right. You think God didn't see man inventing television? <laughs> well, Pastor Jennings, can you prove it with the Bible? Yes. Yeah. Yes, I can. The Bible says man have sought out. Many, many, many inventions. Well, Pastor Jennings, the Bible also talks about inventors of evil things. A, a telephone is an invention, right. but it can be used for evil. That's right. Mm -hmm. A car is an invention. Yeah. But if you're riding around picking up whores, <laughs> am I right? That's right. You're using it for evil. That's right. Money can be an evil thing. Yeah. And then the Bible says money answer for all things. But money that's printed at the mint mm -hmm. can be used for an evil thing. That's right. Mm -hmm. A church building is supposed to be the house of God. Yeah. But it has been proven these places are being used for evil things. That's right. Do you see what I'm telling you? That's right. I want to break this down so plain before men and women are quick to say you're going to hell for this and you're going to hell for that. Wait. Wait. Wait, I said. <laughs> That's right. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. You can take fire and use it for an evil thing. That's right. Someone said, how in the world can you do that? Listen, you got people who uh, burn other people's houses down and kill families. Yeah. You got bigots and racists that have bombed churches. Oh, yeah. Black churches and so-called white churches. Mm -hmm. What do they use? Bombs, fire yeah. to burn them up. That's right. You can take the Bible, the Bible 
and use it, use it. for an evil thing. That's right. That's how these false prophets got rich. That's right. Are you listening? Amen. I want to break it down so plain. Amen. You jump on Pastor Jennings, preachers. You come on now. Listen. <laughs> for the vision is yet for an appointed time. The vision is for an appointed time. But at the end it shall speak. It shall speak. And not lie. It won't lie. Though it tarry, it wait will, for what, it. Do what? Though it tarry. Though it tarry. Wait for wait it. Wait for it. Because it will surely come. It will come. It will not tarry. Now, that's what God brought to me years ago before I met any of you. Mm -hmm. All the work that we are doing everywhere in the world first was shown to me in a vision. A vision, that's right. I was a young, I was a young fella. That's he right. never told me when, he never told me where, and he never told me how. Yeah. He just showed me yeah. in my early teens. Yeah. And I'm actually living in the vision. That's right. In fact, you're watching television now. Amen. Live television. Amen. See, you got live television and you got recorded television. Right. This is live television. That's right. Vision, what you see, and I'm telling you. That's right. I'm telling you the things of God. That's right. That's right. Are you getting me? Amen. Now, give me the book of the epistle of John, mm -hmm. and then I, I want to get the apostle John first. Right. I want to show you how this harmony. Listen, I want John, mm -hmm. this second, first epistle, John, second chapter. And verse 15. And then I want St. John. St. John. 316. Right. And then I want Corinthians. Mm -hmm. I'm working on, I want you to focus on one word. The world. The world. I want to focus on the, the word world. That's it. Are we to love it or hate it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. Go ahead. <laughs> Listen! 1 John chapter 2 and at verse 15. I know things aren't working on this, but I got to put the eight ball right in the corner pocket, you know. Amen. Hey Amen. I got all the scriptures racked all on the, the table and I'm, I'm cueing my stick. That's right. Thank God and I'm cueing my tip with scripture. That's right. Hey Amen. I see that I'm going to line it right up. That's it. Hey Amen. And when I hit it, every false religion got to break and go its separate way. That's right. Hey. Amen. All right, son. Come on. First John chapter 2 and at verse 15. I want to break down the scriptures and make them harmonize. Harmonize. First epistle of John. Chapter 2. And only for no one to write me and say, you twisting the Bible. I'm not going to twist nothing. No. We're going to break it down so plain. That's right. I want to work on the invention of radio, movie theater, television, yeah. and internet. Go ahead. All created by man. That's right. And the creation of those things fulfill scripture. That's right. That the man inventing, inventing things. Inventing. Listen. First John chapter 2 and verse 15. Follow me real quick. Love not the world. Wait a minute. If mm. God tell you don't love something, what he's telling you? Hate it. What's opposite of love? Hate. Hate. Love not the world. Neither the things that are in the world. Wait a minute. Neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world. All that is in the world. The lust of the flesh. Is, is, wait a minute. Is what the flesh want. And the lust of the eyes. Is what the eyes want to see. And the pride of life. It's the pride of life. Is not of the Father. It's not of the Father. But is of the world. Hmm. Now the question is this. The Bible said it's the, what's in the world is the lust of the flesh. Lust of the flesh. Lust means to want, correct? But do everything the flesh want wrong? No. So I say, wait a minute, Pastor Jenny, you twisted the scripture. No, I'm not. The flesh want to eat. That's right. God say all men must eat. That's right. Flesh have to wear clothes. God said them clothes ain't coming from heaven. No. There is no sewing shop in heaven. No. God tell the flesh work. That's right. He said, if you don't work, you don't, don't eat. You don't eat. That's right. But yet the Bible says, oh, all. Oh, that is all, in the world. All. Oh, all. That is, that in, is the in the world. The lust of the flesh. You see, I just can't quote that. I got to break it down. That's right. The Bible said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Oh. I was glad when they said unto me, say unto who? Flesh. Right. That's just happy about going to church. That's right. 
Amen. Amen. Are you getting me? For all that is in the world. I have to break this down. Oh, yeah. All that is in the world. The lust of the flesh. Is what the flesh wants. And the lust of the eyes. Is what the eye wants to see. And the pride of life. Now, it's talking about what the eye wants to see. So that's why the Bible said if your eye offend, you pluck it out. Right. Because there are things that I want to see that's against God. That's right. But yet everything that I want to see is not against God. Amen. I love seeing souls going down in the water in the name of Jesus Christ. That's right. I love sitting in a negotiating table, signing contracts. We got another temple here. That's right. I love to see men humble, sincere, ready to come walk with the word of God. Yeah. I love to see men, women, boys and girls, Holy Ghost, fall on them and they come through speaking in tongues. I'm looking at them. Looking at it. I'm seeing it. That's right. I'm beholding it. That's right. Do you hear? For all that is in the world. All that is in the world. The lust of the flesh. The lust of the flesh. And the lust of the eye. The lust of the eye. And the pride of life. Now, the pride of life. Is not of the Father. Is not of the Father. But is of the world. The pride of life. Pride of life. Now, when the Bible talk about the pride of life, that's dealing with being lifted up in this life. That's right. Amen. That's why God want to humble people. That's right. Discipline people. Mm -hmm. Ready to be governed by his word. That's right. Uh -huh. Now in St. John chapter 3 and at verse 16. All right. For God so loved the world. <laughs> but what did John, the epistle of John said? Love not the world. But what did St. John said? God so loved the world. But what the epistle John said? Love not the world. What the St. John said? For God so loved the world. You see, I got to come right in the middle of both scriptures. That's right. And break them down. That's right. Some folks say, well, I don't have no television in my home. You think a television is just a screen? Hmm. Is that what you think? Amen. Oh, yeah. When you walk out there, you name one thing that's out there. Some folks say, I don't want to bring the devil in my house. Then you leave your home. <laughs> Why? You in there. That's right. Am I right? I don't want the devil in my house. Then leave your home. Amen. Well, I'm not the devil. Are you perfect? No. Is it sin in you? Yes. The Bible says he that sin is of who? Of the devil. Thought you can get around that, couldn't you? That's right. That's right. Anytime you have not yet mastered the life of Jesus and lived up to all what the apostles preach, there's sin in you. Now, he that committed sin. The Bible speak plain. First John chapter 3 and at verse 8. What? He that committed sin is of the devil. Wait a minute. No. The Bible says he that committed a little sin. He that committed sin. No, no. Little sin. He that committed sin. Let us stop talking about white lie, black lie, little <laughs> sin. The Bible just speaks plain. He that committed sin. Is of the devil. So because you ain't got a television in your house, that don't mean you can't sin. No. Are you that foolish? Oh, no. You mean to tell me sin didn't exist until a television came? Are you that ignorant? <laughs> oh, Lord. There, was no, there was no box in the Garden of Eden. No. And Adam still disobeyed God. That's right. That's right. When you think evil, you sin. That's right. When, you, when your mind just Think something against the scripture. Yeah. You sin. Because the Bible said the very thought of foolishness is what? Sin. sin. Very thought of. When you don't believe the Bible, you sin. That's a sin. When you think you're more holier than thou, when the Bible says, don't be righteous over much. Right. You sin. That's right. Hmm. Amen. Amen. John says what? For God so loved the world. And what did the apostle say? Love not the world. Which is it? Is it? <laughs> That's right. Which is it, Mr. Preacher? That's right. The Bible says. God so loved the world. And the apostle said. Love not the world. Which is it? Which is it? Do we love it or hate it? Mm. The Bible said God loved the world mm -hmm. that he gave his only begotten son. And the apostle said, don't Lo you love it? Love not the world. And the world have more than one meaning. That's right. You got the world as planet, and you got the world as human family. That's right. When the Bible said God so loved the world, that means he loved the human family, but God hate the deeds of the world that contradict his will. That's it. Are you getting it? That's it. Now let's get the apostle mm -hmm. when he dealt with the world in marriage. Now in 1 Corinthians chapter 7. Follow me, follow me, follow me, First follow me, mm -hmm. follow me, 
follow me. Yeah, a lot of exactly. folks don't want to follow me in the Bible because they're scared they're going to see it in there. <laughs> That's right. That's right. How in the world a man going to get up and say, well, you're going to hell for going to the movies and you got a television at home. Amen. And you watch internet. Amen. It depends on what you watch. That's right. I would to God our telecast was in every movie theater in the world. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Pastor Dennis, you mean to tell me if Paramount call you and, and, and want to air your program in the movie theater, you will let them? Yes. Oh, yes. Not only would I let them, I'd go in the theater live and preach. That's right. Paul said, I became all things to all men. That's right. I go right in the movie theater, stand right in front of the screen and preach the word of God and make you come down that aisle and take you down in water. Well, I'll put a pool right in front of the screen. That's right. And let them film me baptizing you. That's right. And then play it back in Paramount. That's right. Go ahead, brother. What do you mean? Learn, know how to take men inventions yeah. and use it for God's glory. That's it. That's right. These screens, these, these cameras, we're able to shoot live now around the world. How you think those souls got baptized today in Dubai? Yeah. They saw the message. Yeah. Why you think all these people now coming out of Sierra Leone, Liberia, from the Congo? Oh, yes. From Ethiopia, from Kenya, from the Netherlands, from Scotland, from Ireland, from Great Britain, from Europe. Amen from Belgium, from Holland, from Malaysia, from the Fiji Islands, from Japan, from China, from Taiwan, from Vietnam. Yeah. Got an email from Iran. An Iranian man wrote me a short letter. He said, the Iranians here is enjoying you. We watch you. Will you please come? Amen. How did he see me? Television. Television. He said, we want to be baptized. You better not tell me that man sinned and he watched me preaching the truth. That's right. We take what man invented mm -hmm. and you're using it for God's glory. Amen. Huh? Amen. How you think you heard of me? Amen. You either saw me on internet or television. Yeah. Well, Pastor Jennings, I think television not as bad as internet. Internet got television beat a million miles. Oh, yeah. There is no filter on the internet. That's it. That's it. But why you use it on, Pastor Jennings? Hmm. I take what man invented mm -hmm. and use it for God's glory. That's it. That's right. Man invented that camera. Yeah. Amen. Man invented airplanes. They have sought out many inventions. Here, 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 world. In the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 7, and at verse 29. Listen. Lo, this only have I found. This only have I found. That God has made man upright. God made man upright. But they have sought out. They have sought out. Many inventions. Many, many inventions. How many in here is surviving without using any invention <laughs> that man made? Raise your hand. Oh. <laughs> well, Pastor Jennings, I don't want nothing the devil made and throw away your clothes. That's right. A That's sinner right. made your clothes. Yeah. You went to a sinner-owned business. Yeah. You wearing sneakers or shoes, underwear, shirt, <laughs> tie, credit card. Yeah. You got a bank account and the bank is owned by sinners. That's right. Well, Pastor Jennings, I don't got my money in the bank account. Do you have money? <laughs> yes, Pastor Jennings, it was printed, printed by sinners. That's right. Come on, jump on Pastor Jennings now. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. Amen. You can shout now. <laughs> if, you're able to, if you're able to get one step up, go ahead. That's right. These microphones, this building, building. built by sinners. That's right. Those drums and pianos. Give me the book of Psalms. Yeah. Give, yes. me the book, give me the book of Psalms, Psalms quickly. 150. 
Let's see how God told us to, what, he, what he told us to do to praise him. Psalms 150, we'll start at verse 1. Solomon. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in the sanctuary. In, the san in where? In the sanctuary. In the sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. What else? Praise him for his mighty acts. Be quick. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Yeah. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Amen. Sound we of got the trumpet. trumpet players. Yeah. But they bought them from music shops mm. owned by sinners. That's right. None of the angels are in horn business. That's right. None of the angels make horns. No. We can't put an order in and call the Lord. We need five horns, Lord. Would you please send us one, please? We, we can't do that. No. So I want to rub your nose in the scriptures. That's right. What is it? Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. God told us to praise him with the trumpet. Pray so him. now we go to a music store yeah. owned by sinners. That's right. And buy the trumpet from the sinner, <laughs> made by the sinner, and use it for God's glory. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Amen. Hallelujah. Look at your toothbrush you use. Tell me Gabriel made it. <laughs> Look at the soap you got, the towel, right. the very home you have. Amen. That's you right. put a down payment of a home. Sinner lived there. That's right. Mm -hmm. You got a real estate company. Yeah. <laughs> owned by a sinner. Amen. And you sat there, and after you got the home, you thank God. <laughs> thank you, Jesus. That's right. For my home. That's right. Where did you get your home from? A sinner. A sinner. <laughs> you went and looked at a car. <laughs> car dealer, Ford, GMC. The Lord bless you with it. You driving. Thank you, Jesus. That's right. Where did you get it from? Sinner. Sinner. That's true. Well, Pastor Jennings, what about food? That don't come from the sinner. It's grown by the Lord, but collected from sinners. That's right. Yeah, I, haven't, I haven't met a holy sanctified farmer yet. <laughs> He's in that tractor chewing tobacco or smoking weed. <laughs> Am I right, I said? That's right. Sinner. Sinner. Milking the cow. Mm -hmm. Sinner. Sinners. Kill the cow. Yeah. Now you got the sinner's cow on your plate. Bacon! <laughs> Hallelujah. You strain at a net and swallow a camel. That's right. That's why the Bible said, don't be over-righteous. Mm -hmm. Stay within the confines of the book. That's it. I love to make things so plain. And sometimes we try to get deeper than the Bible and more spiritual than the Bible. That's why we have to come and smack your back into reality. Amen. All the clothes I got on, it came from a sinner. Came from a sinner. My shoes, my socks, down to my suspenders. Yeah. My glasses I bought from the airport. Yeah. A sinner, I said. <laughs> That's right. Go ahead, brother. The Bibles we have very Bible. printed by the printing shop owned by sinners. That's right. Every Bible you buy, All the Bible. every Bible you ever bought, mm -hmm. your hymn books printed by sinners. That's right. Amen. I want you to think so you don't be over-righteous. Yes. Oh, yes. Someone say, well, Pastor Dennis, if you build a church, God's holy people build a church. That's right. right. But we buy the material to build it from sinners. Amen. We buy the lumber, <laughs> buy the sheetrock, yeah. buy the metal studs. Oh, yeah. I got to call a cement company. We need 50 tons of concrete. Oh, Come yeah. on, devil, with your trucks. <laughs> Am I right, I said? That's right. That's right. You're over righteous fool. Be not over righteous. Do you hear the Bible talking? Be not righteous over much. Now, let's break this down with the Bible. Let's get the marriage mm -hmm. in the book of uh, Corinthians, I believe it is. Yes, in the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 7. Now, let us remember to love not the world. Love not the world. But now we have to break that down in depth. That's right. All right? 1 Corinthians 7 and at verse 33. This is a good lesson this afternoon. Amen. Give chapter and verse again. 1 Corinthians chapter 7 and we're at verse 33. All right, son. But he that is married. He that is married. Careth for the things that are of the world. Wait a minute. He that's married. 
How do he feel about the things of the world? Careth. He care for them? Careth. He care for the things that are of the world. And how he may please his wife. He care. 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 For the things of the world. How he may please how his he wife. May please his wife. His what? His wife. Amen. He go buy her a washer and dryer. Please, please. Mm -hmm. Holy Ghost didn't make it. <laughs> no. He go to Sears and Roebuck. Well, Pastor Jennings, it's impossible to use a washer and dryer in an evil way. You're wrong. That's wrong. Let me take you to school. Mm -hmm. You ever heard of counterfeit money? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You didn't know it, but when they print money, they put it in the dryer. Yeah. They take fake money and put it in the dryer so it can dry quicker. That's right. So you can use a washer and a dryer mm -hmm. and sin with it. That's right. Uh -huh. Woman mm -hmm. got her pants in there. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Mm -hmm. A man got his dress in there. Amen. Am I right? That's right. That's you right. never thought of that, did you? Amen. Go ahead, brother. A woman got her halter in there. And the Bible says, come up the shame of thy nakedness. Yeah. You can sin with anything. Anything. That's right. I can sin with these shades. Yeah. With brothers in the airport, don't want them to see what I'm, um, what I'm looking at. Right. Huh? That's right. Act like something wrong with your eyes. Oh, man. Am I right, I say? That's right. <laughs> Amen. I want to teach you teach so you don't be like other so-called church people, high-minded, arrogant. Yeah. Don't let your mind exceed the wisdom of God and don't think for one second you're deeper than God. Amen. That's why the Bible has to be broken down, explained, and made plain. Right. Look at what the Bible says in the book of John. Love not the, not world. the world. Love not the Neither world. Neither the things that are in the world. But now here comes the Apostle Paul. Mm -hmm. But he that is in married. Chapter and verse. 1 Corinthians 7 and verse 33. 1 Corinthians chapter 7. And verse 33. Verse 33. But he that is married. He that's married. Careth. He cares. For the things that are of the world. And what did John say? Love not the world. And what? Neither the things that are in the world. And what did Paul say? But he that is married careth for the things that are of the world. He cares for the things? The things that are of the world. Wait a minute. Paul said what? He that is married cares for the things that are of the world. And what did John say? Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. And what did Paul say? He that is married careth for the things that are of the world. What did John say? Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. You see, preachers don't get scriptures like that. Like that. Somebody said, well, they contradict. No, you need a man of God to come between the scripture and break it down. That's it. That's right. That scripture lets you know that all things that are in the world is not against God. That's right. Because there are things in the world you need to survive. Amen. Paul says what? But he that is married cares for the things that are of the world. Sure, that's why you can go to the mall. And you always know when a man is in there with his wife. You'll see Amen. most of the men sitting down somewhere. <laughs> they all find a place and they all sit. Because we know our wives will walk us down. <laughs> Listen, I'm on my feet for hours. I mean hours. And I'm used to it. But when I shop with my wife, I'm like, are we done yet? Are we there yet? Are we there? Oh, I want to look at this. Let's look, all right, let's look at it. Look at that. Oh, let's look at that. All right. Let's go back to that store. All right. Let's go. All right. Amen. Sometimes she just say, you go over there. <laughs> Sometimes I go over there and I'm looking. <laughs> this building will make a nice church. <laughs> you get what I'm telling you. Amen. Listen plainly. So this is what happened when you get married. You start caring for the yeah. thing, because a man not single, he may get an apartment. Okay, yeah. get an apartment. 
you know, you may not go shopping as much when you're on your own. Right. You know, you satisfied, maybe get hot dogs, pork and beans, pack of Kool-Aid once in a while. You know, ice tray all empty, got two ice cubes in there. You know, That's right. you ain't been worrying about it. He that is unmarried. Here, yeah, listen. Now in 1 Corinthians chapter 7 and at verse 32. He that is unmarried. Careth for the things that belong to the Lord. He gets focused on, he ain't worrying about all that stuff. He ain't worrying about shopping for the rubber dresses and all that stuff. He ain't worrying about all that stuff. That's right. But man, once he get married. He that is married. He that is married. Careth for the things that are of the world. Wash machine and dryer. Yeah. And one thing about a woman, brother, when she, she'll take up her closet and yours. Amen. You're going to have to build something, even a shed in your yard. <laughs> when you was by yourself, you know, yeah, you had plenty of room. Plenty of room. Man, you had drawers with nothing in them. Huh? That's right. Moment you get married, the, the drawers is vomiting. You pull the drawer out, you can see stuff coming out the drawer. <laughs> That's sticking out the drawer. That's right. And accumulate quick. Oh, yeah. And remember, the Bible said, love not the world, not neither, the the world. Thing, neither the things that are in the world. In the but world. then the Apostle Paul says, but he that is married care for, for the, the things, things of the that world. are of the then world. Then he gave the reason. How he may how? please. How? How? He may, he may please, please his wife. His wife. How he may And please. what? There is a difference also. Between a wife and a virgin. Yes. The unmarried woman. The unmarried woman. Careth for the things of the Lord. She careth for the things of the Lord. That she may be whole. That she may be whole. Both in body and in spirit. In body and in spirit. But she that is married. Now dealing with the woman. Mm -hmm. Now when the woman is married. Careth for the things of the world. So do you. How she may please her husband. I told you. That's right. So that lets you know all things that's of the world is not wrong. That's it's right. how you use it. That's right. That's right. There are many things in the world that are just downright wrong. Mm -hmm. you, ain't, you ain't got no business bothering with it. Yeah. But there are some inventions mm -hmm. depending upon how you use it, like mm -hmm. the internet. Right. Today, hardly is hardly no personnel offices no more. That's right. All your resumes, and you have to send it on the internet now. That's right. I was one, if I use the term was primitive <laughs> to the computer world. Amen. Man, my brothers would get on me, look, Pastor, won't you get an email address? I said, for what? <laughs> you know, email address. You want to send me a letter, write your name, get a stamp. <laughs> a snail, man. <laughs> and the moment we moved to Lindley Avenue, and I had all these contractors, Pastor Jennings, your email address. We, got, we can send you our proposal. I don't have, I had emails going to my daughters, going to my daughters. <laughs> my daughters was like, listen, caveman. <laughs> my daughter said, listen, caveman. All these contractors you got, dad, you're going to have to get an email. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I don't want no email. They were like, ah. One of my daughters said, listen, you one of our daughters told the other, he gonna end up getting a pigeon and tying a note to it if he don't catch up. <laughs> I had so many, so I had to end up getting an email. I never had an email. I ain't had no use for it. Didn't want one. But now I got contracts coming in from all over. Emails. Yeah. Gotta read them. Gotta print them out. Yeah. Proposals. Got to sign off. Learn how to sign on. I'm not used to signing nothing with my finger. That's right. They even got it now, what is it? These credit cards with the little squares hooked to their phone. I remember when a man first did that to me, I thought he was joking. He gave me his phone to put off this square. I said, I ain't got no pen. He said, your finger. I said, ain't nothing wrong with my finger. He said, write with it. I said, what? Hallelujah. While I'm writing, I'm saying, this is ridiculous. <laughs> but it fulfilled the Bible. That's they right. sought out many, many, many inventions. inventions. It's just a lawful way and an unlawful way to use it. It's not a sin to text. It's depending upon what you say in the text. Because right. the Bible says, by thine words, you're what? Justified. And by thine words, you're what? Amen. 
It's not a sin to email. It depends upon the contents of the email. That's right. It's not a sin to type a letter. It depends upon what you say in that letter. And they that use this word. Uh oh. In 1 Corinthians chapter 7 and at verse 31. They that use that this word. Use this word. As not abusing as it. As not abusing it. For the fashion of this word. For the fashion of the word. Passeth away. Pass away. Amen. You're not supposed to abuse, abuse what's here. That's it. That's right. Oh, how sweet the Bible has it. Amen. Yes, Amen. Oh, yes, I use television, internet, radio. If it was possible, I could put the message on a phone line. <laughs> Anywhere we can give it to you. That's right. Now, what the, like drones. Yeah. Right. I wish I could put a recording on a drone with speakers. <laughs> Let it just fly in neighborhoods. <laughs> Repent. No. Repent and be a whole message. Just fly, hover over a neighborhood and let the message just blast. Blasted. And then when the message is over, they go away and they call it an identified object. <laughs> Amen. Are you getting what I'm telling you? Amen. The Amen. Bible speaks plain. And they that use this world as Churches not... say, oh, it's a sin to have a television. Then what do you got a, uh, what you got a laptop for? A laptop. Why you got a phone? Because yeah. everything that's on television is on your phone. It's true. You, can look, you ain't even got to buy a television. You can look at it right on your phone. And you right. can't say, I'm not looking at a television. Do you see what you're looking at? Yes. Is it talking to you? Yes. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So we take the term television and we use it in a narrow way as something created by Zenith or uh, Toshiba or uh-uh. Bigger than, that. bigger than that. Much bigger. That's right. Listen. And they, in 1 Corinthians 7 and verse 31, uh -huh. and they that use this word. I had a UPC preacher. He said, I believe what you preach, but I'm against you being on television. Mm. I said, well, tell me, how do you know I'm on television? I don't have a telecast in your city. He said, I watch you on internet. <laughs> I said, you watch me on internet. But yet you say, I'm, I'm, I'm of the devil, I'm on television. Mm. He said, yes. I said, is internet a screen? He said, yes. I said, do you see me? He said, yes. I said, then shut your mouth up. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Television now has been reduced to a phone, laptop, flat screen, yeah. round screen, curved screen, yeah. everything. Everything. I want to break it down, this love not the world. Not the world. Mm -hmm. Now, what did the Apostle Paul say about the married couples? Back in 1 Corinthians 7 and verse 33. How many here that are married? Raise your hand. You that are married, how many had to care for something in the world to please your husband? Raise your hand. Mm. How many of you had to care for something to please your wife? Raise your hand. Every mm. last one of them had to do something. That's right. Whether go look for a new house because you had so many babies, you outgrew what you had. <laughs> Amen. 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 Bought your wife a car. Yeah. Holy Ghost don't need a car. <laughs> 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 but that's an inventor. That's invented. That's something that's invented. That's right. Yes, it is. That's right. The material of that car came from somewhere. Oh, yeah. The rubber came from a tree. Do you see what I'm telling you? Amen. Listen. 1 Corinthians 7 and verse 33. I had a preacher write me and said, I know you got the truth, but uh, why don't you preach against wearing eyeglasses? He said, I noticed some of your ministers and people in the congregation wear eyeglasses. Mm -hmm. I said, that's right. Wow. Yeah, they wear eyeglasses. He said, please call me. So I called him and talked about it. And I asked him one question. I said, do you wear shades? <laughs> he said, oh, yes. You know, I wear shades to keep the sun out of my eyes. You know what he said? Shades are not glasses. <laughs> wow. I said, shades are not glasses, then uh, why are they on your eyes? <laughs> <laughs> he said, well, eyeglasses, a person should trust God so God can heal their eyes. I said, then why don't you trust God to protect your eyes from the rays of the sun? <laughs> My Lord help us. 
I had an old mother come to me with the same thing. Pastor, I, I, I don't blame them. They are products of teaching. I had an old mother come to me. She said, Pastor Jennings, I was taught as a sin to wear glasses. And I took all my glasses and threw them away. And she said, I don't believe nobody can be saved uh, that wear glasses. I said, all right, mother. I said, uh, do you wear anything on your eyes? She said, yes, I, I wear contact lenses. I said, Mother, you got on glasses. <laughs> Amen. I said, contact lenses is just another form of glasses that's designed to shape the pupil of your eyes. Yeah. But you're looking through a lens. That's right. I said, can you see without them? She said, no. <laughs> she said, Pastor Jenner, that's why I asked you. Because she said, a lot of us has been messed up through the years through what preachers call apostles' doctrine. But when we listened to you, we found out a lot of stuff had nothing to do with the apostles' doctrine. It was preachers' opinions and personal feelings. Right. Yes, sir. I don't care about nobody's opinion when it comes to the Bible. That's right. Everything that's in the movies on television, everything that's on television is on internet, everything that's on internet is on your phone. Yeah. It depends upon what you watch that will damn you or save you, and what you hear right. that will damn you and save you. Even if you don't own no electronic device, right. depending upon what you look at out in the street, right. will damn you and save That's you. Right. Depending upon what you listen to in the street, will damn you and save you. That's right. That's right. Bible said, close your eyes from seeing what? See evil. And you can see evil without a television. Oh, yeah. Stop your ears from hearing about what? Blood. About hearing about blood. You can hear about wickedness without a television. That's right. That's right. Look, look at the telephone. Huh. You got television, telephone. Yeah. Television, telephone. That's right. Then you had telegraph. That's right. That's right. That's right. Am I right? That's right. They send messages by telegraph. It's a message. You read it. Mm -hmm. Telephone. You get messages. Mm -hmm. You return messages by returning calls. Yeah. Wonderful. By thine words. I remember another old elder sent me a tape of Bishop Bessie Johnson preaching against television. And then Bishop Johnson said, now... If I was on television, watch me. <laughs> he said, you watch me, but the moment I go off, turn it off. Mm. Well, either it's right or wrong. <laughs> That's right. That's right. He said, if I was on there, watch me, and you can see the truth. He said, but when I stop preaching, turn it off. Mm. Amen. Amen. The world is watching the truth of God. Yeah. All of you that are sitting here today saw us. Yeah. I didn't know you. You saw us. That's right. And the power of God came out of us through that television, through that internet, yeah. and worked on your heart. That's right. That's something. We came down here last year, uh, close to a hundred souls Amen. went down in water in the name of Jesus Christ. How did they saw us? Television and internet. Amen. Amen. And yet they both is of the world. Of the world. But I used it for God's glory. That's right. I'm in the UPC. We don't have television, and yet they got internet. Shut your fool mouth. Huh. You got a laptop watching everything you want to watch on a laptop, and then you trying to preach against television. A laptop is another form of a television. That's all it is. Ye they even got smart TVs now. Yeah. Your smart TV is just a big laptop in your house. 
You can do your work on it, your business work, and the same thing you got folded in a briefcase, you got it in your bathroom or your living room. That's you right. old liar. That's right. I'm jump on Pastor Jen as I take the word of God and wear your britches off. Ye blind guides. Listen, that's the Bible. In Matthew chapter 23 and at verse 24. Ye blind guides. With strain, strain and a, at net, a net and swallow a camel. Tell me I'm going to hell because I'm on television here. I got hundreds of letters of many people from around the world said the Holy Ghost fell on them looking at the telecast looking on television. Amen. It's wonderful. Receive the Holy Ghost. A woman wrote me just two weeks ago. She said, I've been seeking the Holy Ghost for years. She said, I was watching the program, and the Holy Ghost fell on me in my living room. I started speaking in tongues. Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Lord. How do we use it for God's glory? That's right. That's right. If I was using it wrong, thousands wouldn't be coming to this so. tough preaching. No way. There's not a man on television or internet with a message tougher than holiness. No. And they ain't got nothing with power in it. That's right. You find everything that's being baptized in the name of Jesus Christ on these large scales coming to the truth of God. Amen. Amen. Even the apostolics, many of them now, is changing their rhythm. They're dropping the term apostolic and saying, we holiness. <laughs> Amen. Some of them is taking apostolic off the church sign. We holiness. <laughs> no more holy than a 12-foot rabbit with Nikes on. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. So before you look down on anyone in the church who got a television, right. why do you got a laptop? That's right. And why do you watch me on your phone? That's right. And why do you watch me now on your wristwatch? Mm. Right. Amen. You got the television now on the wrist watch. You can, you can Google me right on your, look right on your watch. Right on the watch. You got people sit in church and follow me in the Bible on their phone, pull the scripture up on their phone. That's right. That's right. They got it so now when you can't find the scripture, you talk to your laptop. Google, where's the book of Tobit? Yeah. <laughs> you look like Star Trek. <laughs> Talking to it. That's right. Get a word messed up. You can't spell it. Google. How do you spell parentheses? Right. Yeah. Parentheses. <laughs> That's right. When we came up, we had to get encyclopedias and Webster and start looking. Now you speak the word. Google. <laughs> Newsy folk. Google where brother so and so lives. That's right. You give him the name, Google give you the address, print out the map, right to his door, you nosy thing. That's right. That's right. Not abusing it. They that use this world. The, the Bible is giving us doctrine mm -hmm. how to use things in the world. 1 Corinthians 7 and verse 31. And they Don't that preach some of it, preach all of it. Yeah. They that use this world. That use this world. As not abusing it. That's doctrine. Doctrine. That's doctrine. That's right. Yes, That's doctrine. Don't make a statement and throw it out there and it's incomplete. Connect the scriptures. Amen. Balance it out. Yeah. They that do what? They that use this world. Go back to Psalms. Praise him on the instruments. I want to get that. Because the world uses instruments. Yes, they do. Rock and roll. Yeah. Rappers. Yeah. R&B. Back in the 30s, you old folk, big band, swing music. Swing. Art Tatum, Artie Shaw, Duke Ellington, Count Basie. Yeah. Cab Calloway. Howdy ho, howdy ho. Howdy -ho. <laughs> Many the Musha. That's right. You old folk know. You used to be out there when you was a young girl just shaking. <laughs> and they used the instruments that the Bible talked about. Amen. Read quick. Psalms 150, now we're at verse 3. Read fast. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. And what? Praise him with the psaltery and harp. And what? Praise him with the tremble and, and dance. What? And what? Praise him with the tremble. And what else? And dance. What else? Praise him with stringed instruments. Boy, old Ethel's can play that Hawaiian guitar, can't he? Yes, sir. 
<laughs> Sometimes that thing sound like he be saying words at you. Amen. Like that good type of saying, oh, be quiet. <laughs> that thing be ringing. Amen. Now, and someone else can play that same Hawaiian guitar and have someone else just shaking their hips. Yeah. That's right. That's right. So it depend upon the use of it. That's right. You can take a microphone and sing to the glory of God. Yeah. Then you can take that microphone. Everybody throw your hands in your air. Repeat after me. Say ho, say ho. I said a jack be nimble, jack be quick. They're going to jack jump over the candle. Six, a 61 and 72. How? <laughs> that's, what the, that's what the young girls used to say when they used to jump rope. Yeah. Chappy Nemo, Chappy Quick, it's a jump double dutch. Mm -hmm. I can take this microphone and use it right and use it wrong. That's wrong. That's right. Something as simple as a microphone. That's right. Amen. I can abuse it or use it right. That's right. Do you hear what I'm telling you? That's right. It's like when you sing for the glory of God or when a choir sing or someone sing a solo, we don't sing to entertain. Right. We sing to glorify God. Amen. We don't play instruments to entertain. We play instruments to glorify God. That's right. That's it depends right. upon purpose, motive, and agenda. Wonderful. We don't wear clothes to impress or to compete with fashion. Go ahead. We dress to be modest. That's right. Not to focus on what the other person have or have not. Yeah. Wonderful, wonderful. Motive behind what you have. Motive, Motive behind what you do. Yeah. And that's what is meant when it says love not the world, yeah. neither the things that are in the world. In the world. Yeah. Your motive behind it. Yeah. Because the man got to care for the things yeah. of the world yeah. to please his wife. That's right. That's why he go to that lingerie store. Mm. <laughs> he got a motive behind it. <laughs> That's right. Huh? That's right. That's right. He go to that lingerie store. Yeah. Well, Pastor Jennings, I'm holy. I don't holy. buy those things for my wife because those things are not becoming. You got power over her body. That's right. That body, that body is yours. If I want to dress my wife up with Victoria's Secrets, you better not bother me. That's right. That's my body. That's right. If I want her to wear the clothes of Jane who swung with Tarzan, you better not bother me. Amen. Why? I got power over that body. The wife has not power over her own body. She come out in Jane clothing and I, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> You better not bother me. You better not bother you. <laughs> hey, don't say nothing. Don't say nothing. Don't say nothing. That's right. That's Wait. the call of the wild. Don't <laughs> say nothing. Glory to God. Do you see what I'm telling you? That's right. That's right. The Bible said don't be righteous over much. Don't be a fool. Don't be a fool. Do you hear? Amen. That's why folks need a preacher who can break down the scriptures. Yeah. They become righteous over much. Some women become righteous over much. Husband, Holy Ghost filled, just like she is, baptized, walking with the truth, and he want to put on a negligee. Well, that's of the world. It's not a sin for you to put that on for your husband. No. Well, Bible says, come up the shame of your nakedness. Why would you, look, if your husband want to see your nakedness, it's his. It's his. Yes, sir. Well, suppose the Lord come. Lord, help the people. The Lord ain't thinking about your negligee. <laughs> he ain't thinking about it. The only time God will speak against it when you got it on for a man that ain't your husband. That's it. Amen. Go ahead. Amen. <laughs> More holy than thou. A husband buy you a negligee and you want to keep wearing sackcloth and ashes to bed. <laughs> Something from 1812 all the way down to your feet. Got a collar come all the way up to here. <laughs> right. And got socks on. <laughs> Somebody, that's your husband. 
not right. on no date with some boyfriend you ain't married to. It's your husband. That's your husband. Now look, now, look how backward you are. He wants you to wear that, and you say no because of out the will of God. So what you put on, he end up taking off. <laughs> so you still make it. So why are you not out of the will of God then? That's right. I want to educate you. You can shout in 2021. Amen. That's why a lot of marriages dissolve because we are overzealous yeah. and overrighteous, and we went past the Bible. Past, that's right. We didn't stay in the Bible. We ran past it. That's right. That's why Amen. I believe in preaching everything. Amen. Everything. Amen. The Holy Ghost had. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the sound. Trumpet is good. Trumpet. Crazy. You start playing the wrong thing. Yeah. I got to say, no, 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 just a minute. That's right. Amen. During the convention, after the break, some of the young brothers was playing around the instrument. I came downstairs, and they was playing the beat. Dun -dum, dun -dum, dun -dum. <laughs> and, I, and I know where the beat come from. <laughs> came from a song, money, 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 money. <laughs> money. They were, dun -dum, dun -dum, dun -dum. And I admit, it sound good. It did. It sound good. See, I'm a, I'm a musician. I'm, yeah. I'm, a, I'm a musician. It sounded good. And I came downstairs, and I was like, and I had to just ignore how it sounded. And, and I had, all right, all right, all right. I said, what you playing? They said, oop, oop, excuse me. They changed it right away. Changed it up. And then after they stopped playing it, the rhythm was left in my head going up the stairs. <laughs> I, I, was, I was walking back up the step to the rhythm in my head. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Everybody might as well come on back to Bible. That's right. And get off your high horse. That's right. Come back to Bible. Come Hallelujah. on back to Bible. Hallelujah. Are you getting what I'm telling you? Amen. Anything under the sun could be used the wrong way. That's right. Anything. Anything. So before you say, if they go to movies, they'll go to hell, <laughs> that depends Same. on what they're watching. That's right. Because movies is played in your home on your laptop, yep. on your phone. On the phone. Yep. It can be a documentary, a history documentary, right. made about slavery or <laughs> white supremacy mm -hmm. or the destruction of the Indians here in America. A whole documentary. The failure of stiffened presidents. A movie needed to be made about Trump. All you got to do is get a clown from the circus to play him. <laughs> Are you listening? Amen. He's a child of hell and of the devil. Oh, yeah. And if this offends anybody, that's your business. <laughs> huh? Amen. I suppose this is good for the present distress. That's right. What did he say? Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Be quick. Praise him with the psaltery and harp. What else? Praise him with the tremble and dance. What else? Praise him with stringed instruments. And Wait a minute. Amen. It says praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Him. It's telling you to use the string instrument, and it's also telling you who to use it for. That's right. Praise him. Now, there are two being praised in the world. Yeah. God and Satan. That's right. Certainly. That's right. God, God. and Satan. So depending upon how we use that string instrument, yeah. if we use it for Satan, we're abusing it. Right. And yet, that's a thing of the world. That's right. That string instrument is a thing of the world, of the world being played by a brother striving to be holy. That's right. That's right. And he can put that same instrument he's playing mm -hmm. in the hands of a sinner. Yeah. That same instrument that he's playing a folk shouting to. Tend to get a hold to a folk speak. Oh, yeah. Why? A different spirit got it now. That's right. You see what I'm telling you? That's right. A whole different spirit got it. Yeah. That's right. You see what I mean by explaining the scriptures? Mm -hmm. 
Listen. Praise him with string instruments. Play, praise him with string instruments. And organs. What? And organs. I played organ over 45 years. Amen. And played it very well. Huh. Never had a lesson in my life. Mm -hmm. It isn't too many of a style of music that I don't know how to play. Amen. Over 45 years I played the organ. But the Bible said, praise him with it. Praise him. I had an offer to play for the devil. Mm -hmm. When I was in high school, making $24,000 a month, mm. playing for a millionaire's club. Not making $24,000 a year. $24,000 a month and offered $15,000 cash up front. I was still in high school. But because I was saved. That's why I tell you, God can interrupt your life, brother. Oh, yeah. I was baptized, had the blessed Holy Ghost and whatnot. <laughs> and when that offer was presented to me, man, that thing sounds good. $15,000 cash? I was about 17 to 18. $24,000 a month? Wow. You know, one thing about the devil, he's going to challenge your salvation. Yes, he will. You ain't walking around here claiming you love God and get away with it. That's right. So, I remember, I went to my father. <laughs> he was reading his Bible, writing down some scripture studies. I said, Pop, he said, what's going on, son? You know, when you want to do something, there's a time that you don't even want to hear scripture. <laughs> Have you ever been there? Oh, yeah. Well, you know, you wish you didn't know some things. I went to my pop, told him what they offered me. My pop just quoted a scripture so plain. He heard me out. He looked at me and said, what profit of man? Gain the whole world and lose his soul. I, and then he went right back reading and writing his Bible. I was like, I'm like, I don't want to hear that scripture now. I got $24,000 a month on the table. But he threw that scripture. And one thing, if you truly got the Holy Ghost, when someone brings the scripture and rightly divide it right, yeah. that scripture quickens that spirit in you. That's right. And I remember when I went back to school, the man came back up, talked to my music teacher, Mr. Mayola, and said, uh, do you know he's in today? He said, yeah, he, he's there. He said, is he going to take the offer? He said, I don't know. He ain't said nothing. The man asked, Gino, so what do you think about the offer? I said, I can't do it. Can't do it. I'm, I'm in church. I can't do it. And the man said to me, you waste your talent in church? Wow. You see, the Bible says this. You cannot get sweet and bitter water from the same fountain. So then the book says, choose ye this day whom you're going to serve. In walking with God, you really have to make a choice. You have to make a choice with your soul, and then when you come into the knowledge of God, you have to choose wisely how you handle the things in this life so you don't misuse them and be on God's wrong side. That's right. As holy the book is, as holy as this Bible is, men can misuse it. Men have done it for years. Oh, yeah. Let me make an example. The Bible said in one place, money answer for all things. Mm -hmm. Didn't it say so? Amen. Oh, all right. But in the eighth chapter book of Acts, the apostles was down in Samaria. And there was a witchcraft worker, a wizard, Simon the sorcerer. He saw the apostles lay hands on people, and people received the Holy Ghost. Simon offered the apostles money, money. money. and wanted to buy Holy the Holy Ghost. That's right. Now remember, the book says money answers for all things. But the Holy Ghost cannot be bought. No. So here is Simon wanted to use money wrongfully, abuse it. Abuse it. 
to try to buy the gift of God. That's right. And when he did that, Peter laid them out. That's right. In the 8th chapter of Acts of the Apostles. Acts chapter 8 and at verse 18. Says what? And when Simon saw that through laying on of the apostles' hands, what happened? the Holy Ghost was given, uh -huh. he offered them money. He offered them money. Saying, give me also this give power. Give me also this power. That on whomsoever I lay hands, he may receive the Holy Ghost. And what? But Peter said unto him, Peter said to him, thy money perish with thee. Wait a minute. You notice? Mm -hmm. But yet the book says money answer for all things. But he couldn't buy the spirit. No. So here's where money was misused. Money was abused. Yet money is a thing of the world. That's right. And it's one of the things that a man care for, yeah. for his wife. For his wife. So one said, well, why he shouldn't care for it? He better care for it because yeah. he got to care for it to take care of his wife. That's right. The bills got to be paid. That's right. So he got to be careful how he use it, how he manage it. Even the wife, even if she's not working and spending money, if she want to keep a roof over her head, she got to be careful how she use the money, even if she's working or not working. That's right. That's right. Why? She's caring for the things of the world to please her husband. her husband. Do you see how the Bible have it? Amen. Listen. But Peter said unto him, Thy money perish with thee. Your money gonna perish with you. Why? Because thou hast thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money. What happened? Thou hast neither part you nor lot in, in this matter. For thy heart is not right your in the sight right. of God. You see, when you don't write and divide the Bible, your heart ain't right. That's right. Heart is not right. Not right. Now one printed off a quote of a fella who always be on the internet yelling about me. Some fella, I think his name is Tim Smith or whatever that fella name is, always yelling about me. He said, Pastor Jenny's a false prophet because he's on television. Like he's supposed to be on that Bishop Johnson. Yeah, he watched me faithfully on the internet. Mm. You out there that think television is just a screen on your wall or in your living room, you got it wrong. That's right. Television is whatever you look at that's playing back, and television is right out in the street, mm. everyday life. That's right. It's the vision of what you see because you talk about everyday life. Yeah. Amen. The news is out there. Then the news come on your screen at home. That's right. The news come on your internet. Time time a news flash or come up on your phone. Your phone. Yeah, Amen. That's right. So you got to know how to use men's inventions without abusing it. Mm -hmm. And everything we have in our house, Holy Ghost don't need a toaster. That's a men invention. That's right. Holy Ghost don't need a bowl. No. Man invented that man, bowl. Man invented it. Stir it up. That batter, make that pound cake. Mm -hmm. huh? That's right. Amen. Make that pound cake. Holy Ghost didn't make that oven. Man invented it. Man. That's why you tell your children, look, I got a cake in the oven. Don't you come jumping in here. I don't want my cake collapsed. You don't want your cake to look like shoes slanted. You want your cake to rise. That's right. Cut it. Be right so it can melt in your mouth, not break your teeth off. Amen. Amen. Man invented those pots invented. that you cook in. Man did. That's right. Now you get some people over there, yes, I don't want no attachment to the things of the world when the Lord find me. Do you know what you're saying? When the Lord come for you, and if you're dead, he going to pull you out of something that was made from the world. It's called a coffin. That's right. God ain't made that casket. No. A man made it. In fact, family members went and picked it out, or you picked it out before you died. You went coffin shopping. Amen. You went coffin shopping like someone shopped for cars. A man showed you, this is our luxury line. <laughs> this is our luxury line. Man, the man will tell you, try it on for size. Try it on. <laughs> huh? That's right. <laughs> man will tell you, try it on for size. And you get in there and, hmm. Oh, oh, fit pretty good. Man, tell you it's made from the finest silk, nice and fluffy. So when you get in here, you ain't got to worry about your body aching. <laughs> you go pick out something else made from the world. You tell your wife or your children what suit you want to be buried in. 
That's right. They give the suit, the shirt, the tie, the shoes. Your old corpse feet got socks on. <laughs> even got drawers on you. Amen. Huh? Amen. Wife say, oh, well, wait a minute. I don't want him to be buried without his glasses. Put his glasses on him. He can read down there. Mm -hmm. I want to make it so plain that it burn your britches. That's right. Huh? And they that use this word. They that use it. As not abusing it. Amen. I don't need a custom made coffin when I die. If I die. That's abusing it. Abusing it. Just put me in a box. <clears throat> Throw me in the earth. I don't care if the box so thin the moment hit the ground it fall apart. I don't plan on staying there in no way. That's huh? right. That's right. Amen. That's just rest that the Lord see fit to give me until he come. And uh, so I can reign with him throughout eternity. Amen. Some of you go shopping for various grade of caskets. Luxury line. <laughs> they, got, they, they got a way you can upgrade your casket. You already got a casket pick out. And now you say, well, I got a bigger polish. I want to upgrade it. <laughs> First, you had a pine, just a, you know, some two by fours put together, covered in wallpaper. <laughs> huh? Then you took out another insurance and policy, made it, you know, a few more thousand. So now you went back and, vi and visit Mr. Wilbur, the funeral director, and said, Wilbur, I want to upgrade my casket. So he take you to the room. This is what we have here, our luxury line. We can even make your casket look like your car if you want. And they do. They make cars, they make caskets look like Mercedes, Cadillac, Jaguars. Wow. You still gonna go to hell. Still going. Listen, I don't care if you're buried on the back of a pony, you going to hell. You don't repent of your sins and are baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. You and that pony gonna burn in hell, hoofs and all. Amen. Huh? Amen. The Bible says. And they that use this world as not abusing it. Don't abuse it. That's it. When the Bible speak against the lust of the eye, that means when you're looking at anything that God is against. That's right. You mean to tell me the truth of the gospel is on television and you telling people you're going to hell for looking, at, looking it? at it? They're not going to hell for looking at this message. They'll go to hell if they don't obey it. That's it. That's right. Yes, sir. That's it. That's right. If this message is on a movie screen, you're going to tell the people to send to go to movies if this message is being preached there? Yeah. Or if a news report come on there? Mm -hmm. Know what you're talking about or leave the subject alone. That's right. That's right. Don't abuse it. That's right. You can go to hell with a telephone. Oh, yeah. Talking to that man that ain't your husband, that woman that ain't your wife. That's right. Talking to your gay boyfriend oh, no. and your lesbian girlfriend. Yeah. You can send them with flowers. Someone said, Pastor Jenner, you ridiculous. No, I'm not. <laughs> what a gay, what a man gonna give his boyfriend flowers for? <laughs> you can send with a, a birthday card. Right. That woman that ain't your wife, you ain't got the business making sexual suggestions That's right. on, a on a card. She ain't your wife. Yeah. You can't tell her what you want to do. No. Go ahead, man. Go ahead. The Bible says. And they that use this world. They as, that use the world. As not abusing it. Not a sin to have a glass. Mm -hmm. You sin depending upon what you put in it. Yeah. Yes, sir. Bible says wine is a mock, a strong drink is raging. And he that is deceived thereby is not wise. Mm -hmm. Amen. It's not a sin to anoint with oil. Yeah. It depends upon how you do it. Give me the fifth chapter, book of James. Mm -hmm. In James chapter 5. James chapter 5, we're at verse 13. Come on, son. Is any among you afflicted? If any among you afflicted, let him pray. Let him pray. Look at my brother here. My brother from Chicago. Mm -hmm. He's, he, he pulled up the scriptures on his iPad. This iPad was not invented in heaven. <laughs> no. It's a screen. And the words is telling him something. Mm -hmm. What scripture you got here? What scripture is this? <laughs> What's that? <laughs> this 
This is, where, where are you reading at? James 5 and verse 13. This is James. James. Is any among you afflicted? Let, let him pray. pray. Mm -hmm. Is any merry? Let him sing song. Mm -hmm. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church. church. I'm looking at a screen. Right. This screen is a written vision of words. That's right. And it's telling me the order of God in church. That's right. Now, other than fasting, anoint your head and wash your face, mm -hmm. or call for the elder of the church yeah. if you're sick, mm -hmm. the Bible don't give you permission to use oil any other way. No. Amen. You sick, the Bible don't give you permission to anoint yourself. Is any sick among you? What should you do? Let him call for the elders of the church. No. Get itself. Let him call for the elders of the church. And the elders of the church ain't talking about a bunch of old men in church. <laughs> no. Someone say, prove it, Pastor Jennings. First chapter of Titus. Titus. Mm -hmm. Titus. Talked to a brother the other day who brought this scripture to me. Amen. He said, Pastor Jennings, don't that mean old men in church? I told him, do you think God is that disorganized that you have a bunch of old men because they're elders running around throwing oil on people? <laughs> no. Give me the first chapter of Titus. Let's see the instructions that the apostle gave. Titus chapter 1 and at verse 5. Get me a human oh. family. I want to put the church in order. Yes. And they, listen, we better not deviate from this. That's right. We better not deviate from this. That's right. Listen. Titus chapter 1, we're at verse 5. What is it? For this cause left I the entreat. Listen, at the apostle. That's what God made me. <laughs> right. I'm an apostle. That's right. I'm God called, God sent, God anointed, God made, God instructed, and God gifted with gospel. Amen. That's why he, hallelujah, he has given me a divine message to work on the hearts of men and women all over the world of every race, creed, and color. That's right. And he has made me a teacher of men. Yeah. That's why he said, you shall catch men. Yes. I make you fishes of men. I'm a fisherman. I'm a fisherman. God have given me, we caught you by God's permission. God permission. And some of you get stubborn and want to go back out there in the water. <laughs> you come on here, got some fake teaching in you, just jumping. I got to scale you. <laughs> and then cut you open and head off split. <laughs> That's right. huh? And then when you catch that fish and get in the boat, it don't want to be, don't there. Want to be there. It's just jumping. <laughs> God, we throw the word of God at folk, you see them jumpers. Turning up their lips. <sighs> that's not the way we talk. That's not where we believe where we came from. I ain't think about where you come from. I come from God. Amen. And I'm coming from God's word. That's right. And whatever God's word say, that's that. That's it. Amen. Only thing I'm interested in is what God said. I'm not going behind your back and telling you. I don't give two cents about what you say at all. I'm interested in what God said. Right. And if you got a mind to get in the kingdom, you better get rid of your mortal mind. Yeah. Listen. Titus chapter 1 and verse 5. What is it? For this cause left I the entreat. It's the apostle talking. The apostle. Left I thee in Crete that thou shalt set in order. The things that are wanting. And he's talking to Bishop Titus. Mm -hmm. And what he tell him to do? And ordain elders in every city. Do what to the elders? Ordain Wait elders. Wait a minute. You got to do what? Ordain elders. These are men that are ordained. That's right. Dang. Not a bunch of old men. Who ever heard of such ignorance? A bunch of old men walking around anointing people with oil. What do you think God is? Mm. So when me and a brother was talking, I said, brother, have you ever read anywhere where a bunch of old men in the New Testament church threw oil on people? Oil. He said, no, Pastor Jen, and that's why I asked you, because the book of Timothy talked about the older men as elders. Yeah. I said, there's elders in age and there's elder as a preacher. Right. And the elder in age don't have the authority to anoint with oil. That's right. He don't have the authority unless he's ordained. Ordained elders. Wonderful. Wonderful. Well, the Holy Ghost. Now, the Holy Ghost ain't going to tell no one to do nothing, say nothing, or act a particular way that contradict that Bible. That's right. You got churches where women going around anointing people. Get your hands down off them folk. It ain't a, it's not a half a scripture. 
that gave you the authority to go anoint people with oil and pray. Yo. There was an apostolic church years ago where a brother told me, well, he, he, he used to go to the mothers because they didn't have no elders, so he ran to the mothers. I said, what woman are they wow. anointing anybody for prayer? Right. He said, well, nobody, but we was told if there's no elders around, run to the mothers. You see how dumb the preachers make the people? Amen. Bad teaching make blind people. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Remember that. Bad teaching make blind people. That's right. Class, class, say it with me, class. Bad teaching make blind people. Students, students, that's what the old teachers used to do. Say it together, students. Bad teaching make blind people. That's right. You blind things that are watching around the world. That's why you're writing me fussing and hollering. Because you got bad teaching. Don't blame me because you got a blind teacher. Yeah. How many people going to get in a taxi cab with a man 100% blind and got a stick showing you he's blind? <laughs> got a stick, red bottom, metal tip. <laughs> Damn mistaken. You run in the cab, boom. Where you want to go? Damn mistaken. Where Sir Fifth and Walnut. All right, hold on to your belt. <laughs> are you going to stay in that cab? Lord. Sir, sir, are you blind? 100%. <laughs> How you going to drive? Well, I got here, didn't I? <laughs> and then when you look down the street, every car on the street is torn. <laughs> you going to let a man blind, blind drive you across the street why would you let a preacher blind keep preaching to you every day because he's your friend, your uncle, your father, your brother who cares about your blood. Spirit outweighs blood. That's right. And Jesus said the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. That's right. Amen. Amen. So you preachers that are saying television is totally wrong, Movies is totally wrong. Internet is totally wrong. Come bring that argument to Pastor Jennings. Yeah. And don't bring it privately. Bring it public. And let's strike it out with the Bible. Right. And don't ask me no dumb questions. Was it a movie theater when the apostles was here? Because then I'm going to ask you, was it a telephone when the apostles was here? <laughs> Amen. We got to teach the church how to use it. How to. Man made a freezer, didn't he? Well, Pastor Dennis, what the wrong you do in the freezer? Freeze liquor. Freeze a Halloween cake. tell you it's all right to do it. <laughs> and then somebody quote me the scripture, herbs are for the service, service of, of man. man. Uh-huh. <laughs> and you high as a kite. <laughs> you start seeing stuff that ain't there. <laughs> then you become dependent on it. Right. And then you start abusing it. Yep. Well, Pastor Jennings, I needed to get me through the day. You need God to get you through the day. Amen. Nothing should be a dependency outside of God. Yeah. That's right. God teach us to lean on him. Yeah. Are you getting what I'm telling you? Yeah. Glory to God. And they that use this word. They give chapter and verse. They give chapter and verse. Give chapter and verse. 1 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 31. They that use the word. As not abusing. They got Bishop Johnson now. Tapes. 
on the internet. Where you people who just heard him for years over radio, he's been dead now about 60 years, but folks never saw what he looked like. They got, they got him on the internet where you can see his pictures, pictures of his debates. They steal pictures, but it's a form of television. Mm, yeah. They steal pictures, showing his debates and showing when his church burnt down, showing them constructing the new church, mm. showing all of it. Amen. Even though the pictures are still, it's still a form of television. Right. And they are using it for God's glory. The movie screen is in your home. The movie screen is your, in your television. It's on your phone. So when you tell folk you'll go to hell for going to movies, it's on your phone. It's on your, it's on your internet. You'll go to hell if you take these things and use it wrong. That's right. Any movie that's against God, you shouldn't watch it. I want to say, well, every movie is against God. That's not so. Because there are some movies that are straight up documentaries, history, showing you what happened in war. Yeah. And war fulfills scripture prophecy. Right. For God said there shall be wars and rumors of wars. It fulfilled prophecy. Every war that go on in the world that you know about and don't fulfill prophecy. That's right. How many here have ever been to war? Raise your hand. How many here ever fought in the war? Raise your hand. All of you may as well raise your hand. You know why? You're in a war now. Right now. You war with yourself. Yeah. Some of you struggle in war with the word. That's right. Bible said, I see another law in my members warring yeah. against the law of my mind. Warring, I say. Warring. I say warring. <laughs> and the scriptures are shooting at you like bombs, That's dropping right. it on you. That's right. Huh? See, God made me a preacher that bombed you with the gospel. We're not a cap gun preacher. <laughs> you know, little cap gun preachers with no power, no, no authority. They get up and all you hear is pip, pip, <laughs> pip, pip, pip. We come by, vroom, 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 vroom. <laughs> Who be the gospel? <laughs> huh? You can see the souls getting hit. Souls. I repent! <laughs> that shot got him. That's right. Are you getting what I'm talking about? That's right. Go back to Epistle John mm -hmm. 215. 15. And then go back to Corinth so I can knock off with this loving the world. I have to, that is a very interesting so, subject yes, that have hardly ever been fully explained. That's right. There's not an invention that man made. That cannot be used wrong. Mm -hmm. Microphones, skateboard. I had a person tell me you'll go to hell. <coughs> hey, another man wrote me and said, the reason why I won't come uh, where you preach. He said, you preach the truth, but uh, you let people ride bikes. That's what I said. <laughs> Lord help us. You got people that use a bike for transportation. Now, how are you going to tell people they're going to hell for riding a bike and you got a stationary bike in your house for exercising? Yeah. You old hypocrite. Some of you need to get on a bike and exercise. Yeah. Get the kinks of the devil out of you. <laughs> and many of our churches in India, where many of them can't afford cars, they get the churches on bikes. They get the churches on bikes. Little motorbikes and bikes you pedal. There's many folks ride their bikes, come to church. That's right. Won't you just stop? It's hard. Listen, give me the fifth. Let me close out the 15th, 15th chapter, chapter of the book of Acts. Acts. I want to educate you real good so I can get out of here. Acts. And we'll come back tomorrow and I can wrestle with you some more. Amen. Listen at this. Acts chapter 15 and at verse 28. Follow me. For it seemed good to the Holy Ghost. It seemed good to God. And to us. And to us. To lay upon you no greater burden. To not to lay upon you no greater burden. Than these necessary things. Than what is necessary. That's it. I ain't laying a burden on the church. Then what's necessary? That's right. Whatever's necessary for your salvation, that's what we preach for you to do. Right. What ain't got nothing to do with salvation, it ain't got nothing to do with it. That's right. 
I'm going to go to hell for being on a bike and I ain't riding to the bar. Right. If I ride to the bar, that's different. Right. I'm not riding to the bar. I'm not riding to the club. That's right. That's right. Are you getting, I'm riding to exercise. Well, exercise is sin, Pastor Jenner. There ain't no Bible say that. The Bible, say the Bible says exercise profiteth little. Little. It profits some. Right. Get the kinks out of you. Sometimes you hurt so much because you don't do nothing. Yeah. You get pains from doing nothing. Right. Sometimes it's good to go for a walk. That's right. Get out and walk, exercise, bike, pedal, stretch yourself. Yeah. Amen. See, a lot of folks think living holy is just living up in the mountains in a cave, <laughs> reading the scriptures all day, and sitting. Sitting, looking. Waiting to see what the Lord say next. You can live in a cave and eat unleavened bread and stale water, and the devil be right in that cave with you. That's right. I want to educate you real good. If you think isolation <laughs> from humanity will make you stop sinning, you have been duped, conned, manipulated by the power of the devil. That's right. Because the devil don't need a crowd to work in your mind. No. Devil work in your mind when you're by yourself, don't it? Oh, yeah. You can, listen, you can catch a plane and go live in the caves of Iraq and stay there until you see Jesus. The devil going to be right in there with you. Even if you don't have a candle, no light, the devil be there in the dark in the right dark. next to you, playing with your head. <laughs> That's right. All in your mind. Devil start talking to you. You see how holy you are? Yes, he will. <laughs> You the only one gonna be saved. Yes, he will. Now, if you want to be closer to God, don't eat nothing. <laughs> don't eat or drink nothing. Lord help us. And because you don't know God from the devil, devil move on you. You thinking it's, it's the quickening power of God. Yeah. And you say, I'm not gonna eat nothing. <laughs> oh, glory. It ain't God. No. It ain't God. No. Because God already spoken. No. All men. Must eat. Must eat. Must eat. And you sitting there not eating nothing in the dark. In the dark. Waiting to hear voices. That's right. And the voices you hear is your stomach. <laughs> I want to educate you. You can shout three years from now <laughs> if you're able then. Amen. Most important thing is getting an understanding of what Word. holiness is about. Don't be overzealous. Yeah. Don't run ahead of the Bible. Stay within the confines of the Bible. When you do this, you won't judge others. But you will judge yourself. That's right. If you judge yourself by the teachings of the Bible and honest with your judgment, you may find yourself admitting Man, I was too zealous. I was running too fast. I, I, wait a minute. I thought, I remember one brother years ago, we baptized him. We was on Frankfurt Avenue. He was so zealous. He went up to the pulpit, shook my hand, and so happy. He said, uh, when do I get my rug? I said, huh? He said, when do I buy my rug? I said, a rug? I said, man, we ain't Muslim. He was ready to buy his rug and go pray towards the east. My Lord. I said, listen, you got carpet at home? I, I, he said, yeah. I said, go pray there. Oh, oh. He said, what direction? I said, I don't care. <laughs> you can pray towards the stove if you like. <laughs> you can pray towards your stuffed animals. <laughs> you can pray towards your stuffed cow. Pray towards your baby's crib. That's right. Face the crib if you like. That's right. I want to knock the foolishness out of you. That's right. For it seemed good to the Holy Ghost. It seems good to God. And to us. And to us. To lay upon you no greater burden. Not to lay upon burden, you no greater burden. Than these necessary things. Whatever is necessary is in that book. That's right. Whatever is not necessary, don't try to burden the people. Right. It's hard enough trying to live holy. Hard enough. Isn't it? Amen. And the standard of God is hard. Oh, yeah. Yes, it is. Too. It's hard. Amen. Amen. 
Amen. A lot of churches tell the children it's a sin to play ball with children. And, right. then, the, and then the bishop that tells the children that play ball with his son. Mm -hmm. It's a sin for your daughters to have dial babies. It's idolatry. That dial baby ain't no idol. <laughs> no. Since when the Barbie is an idol, God? Oh, no. A thing is an idol when you make it a God. That's right. You can make me a God. And go to hell. Oh, yeah. You can make money a God. Yeah. Strain at a net and swallow a camel. Oh. How are you going to tell the folk it's a sin for your children to play ball in the neighborhood? Paul said, when I was a child, I thought as a child, a child and spake as a child. Yeah. And here you in the backyard throwing ball to your son. Well, how is not a sin with you? <laughs> well, I'm saved. What is it? Save dodge a ball? <laughs> do, you see, do you see the ignorance? Holy dodgeball, holy soccer, holy football, mm. holy baseball. It's worth laughing about. I love to get a hold of them type of overzealous men and grind them down to Epsom salt. That's right. Don't stretch the Bible further than what it is. It is. A couple came to me and told me how their bishop told them, them wife bought a little tea set for their daughter. Bishop told them that tea set is of the devil because that's making mockery of a real kitchen. Oh, my God. Mm. Idiots. <laughs> they just straight up idiots. idiots. You men that are watching me that's trying to be deeper than the Bible, sit down. That's right. That's right. You need to just go somewhere and sit down. You're going to put kids in hell for playing with a tea set. My Lord. Playing with a tea set. Oh, yeah. That's why a lot of kids hate their father and hate their mother. They raised them wrong. Yeah. You put them in hell for something they ain't got nothing to do with God. A mm. child going to go to hell for playing with tea? Mm. Daddy, daddy, come on, play tea with me. You better get your mind on God, you'll go to hell. The child's only four. My Lord, my Lord. The child is only four. Mm. You beat the child, I'm going to beat the devil out of you. You parents need to be taught. Yeah. Come out of your churches. Who, oh, Pastor Jennings? Everybody. Everybody. Leave your churches. Pastor, you leave the church too. <laughs> you leave the church too. You walk right out the pulpit and tell your congregation you threw. Go get a job and go to, work. go to work. Come on here so we can baptize you after you repent for misleading the people. Go down in water in the name of Jesus Christ. That's right. Just get out the pulpit. Get out. That's right. Blind and overzealous things got you going to hell. Hmm. One man told me you'll go to hell for laughing. <laughs> and I laughed when he told me that. <laughs> yes, he did. Yeah, Pastor Jennings, I watch your telecast. I know that you laugh quite a bit. I say, yes, I enjoy what I'm doing. He said, if you did it right, you wouldn't laugh. I said, is God serving the Godhead right? He said, yes. I said, he said, he laugh at your calamity. And if he laugh, I can laugh. Ha, 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 ha. He said, that's one thing I got. He said, that's one thing I say about you. You always got Bible for something. That's right. I duck in the scriptures. Oh, yeah. When you shoot at me, I duck right in the scriptures. I just stand behind the scriptures. That's why I don't feel no shots. <laughs> I don't feel no shots. That's right. There's supposed to be a preacher coming to meet me next week in Wisconsin from an apostolic church to debate me over Jesus Christ as God. He said, you don't know what you're talking about. He said, I admit you got some knowledge. He said, but I'm able to steer you on the right track. He said, I'm deeper than you think I am. I said, oh. I said all right. I said, I advise you just go back and listen to the program. He said, I don't need to listen. Wow. He said, I'm coming down into Wisconsin from Chicago, and I'll prove to you Jesus Christ is not God. I said, are you sure you want to do this? He said, Pastor Jennings, I'm ready. <laughs> All right, you come on. I got an everlasting beating laid up. 
I beat your Bible out of your hand. Bible out. <laughs> right. I beat it out your hand. That's right. Drop it. Make you drop your own drop. book. Jesus That's Christ right. is God Almighty, and I ain't talking about no flesh. Right. Ain't no flesh and blood is God. No. What was in that flesh was God. That's right. And the flesh took on the name of God and the title of God. That's, it. That's why he said, I come in my father's name. And he at one time didn't come in the name Joseph. No. Get it? No. He said, I come in my father's name, and at no time did he come in the name Joseph. No. He went as far as telling me that we got two saviors. He said, God is the savior of the Old Testament, and Jesus is the savior of the New Testament. Then he went as far as telling me that Christ is the last name of God. Christ is God's last name. Like Genesis is my last name. He said, I'm deep. Anna, I laugh. You deep, all right. Deep. Too deep for me. <laughs> Christ is God's last name. Lord help us. That's that Chicago jungle juice. <laughs> huh? That Chicago jungle juice got gotcha. you. Christ is God's last name. 